Hello! Today we will be solving this problem called maximum subarray sum. So we are, we are given an array of n integers and our task is to find the maximum sum of values in a contiguous non-empty subarray. And um, this problem is very famous. Uh, it is very common. And let's check out the, the example here. n is 8 and we are given this array. And the answer here is 9. And we would get that if we take this subarray. We would get 11 minus 2 which is 9. So let's go to the drawing board and think about this problem. So this is our example, um, n is equal to 8 and that's our array. So let's think of an easier problem. What if all the elements were greater than or equal to 0? What would happen if we had something like this? Here the answer is obvious, we will just take the whole array because there is no point in leaving uh, some values. But here, since we have negative values as well, then the incentive of taking everything is not as strong. Because, for example, here, uh, if we had something like this, 10, a million, and negative a million and 10, then there is for this, then, there is no point in taking all this because even though it would have an additional 10, it would have to be subtracted by a million, so there is no point in taking this. So let's try to find the answer here. First, we start with negative 1, and that's our solution so far, because remember, we, can, we cannot take uh, non-empty non subarrays uh, that's why if all elements are negative, then our answer won't be zero. It would be some, it would be the minimum value in that array. So here, if we just had this negative one, uh, we would just have it as an answer. Here, if we had these two elements, the answer would be two. Uh, the answer would actually be three because there is no point in taking this negative one. So, our subarray would just be 3 by itself. Same thing here, if we had these three first elements, the answer would be just these three, because there is no point in taking these negative values. Whereas here, when we, if we had this whole interval, the maximal answer would be this. And here, although uh, we have a negative value in this answer interval, it's better than taking just this uh, value by itself. Why? Because uh, the value we're gonna get from here is positive, it's gonna be 1. It's better than just 5 by itself. But what is the difference between this case and the previous case? Here, uh, the in this case, we would take this whole uh, a subarray that is positive. Whereas when we were at this position, uh, taking this negative one would just result in taking a negative value. So the idea here is to only take uh, the values we've accumulated so far if it's gonna make your result better than uh, the result of you by yourself. So I think this is enough introduction before presenting the algorithm that solves this problem and that's Kazan's algorithm and its motto is let's go of the past when it becomes a burden. So the example we had was something like this. We had 8, negative 1, 3, negative 2, um, 5, and 3, negative 5, and then 2, 2. So, how then this algorithm works in the following way. It has, it keeps track of the answer we have, 
and then uh, it has another variable called past that we initialize with zero and the best so far we would actually uh, try to max it every time and since the values can be negative so we need to set it to the lowest possible value and that would be something like uh, min of long long so something like uh, minus 10 to the 18th because remember these values can go up to 10 to the 9th and we have 10 to, f to the 5th of them so the sum would be up to 10 to the 14th so we need to use long longs here and the algorithm as we said works in the following way we start at this negative one and then we check out what is our past so far so here is it better to keep hold of our past or to let go of our past here it does not make a difference between neg because negative one plus zero is the same as negative one by itself so we'll just say that negative one but now our past has become negative one here when we come to three we would see that the past is negative one so what's better taking three by itself or uh, carrying the past with us and having a value of two so three by itself is better and now the past has become three when we get to two we ask ourselves again is it better to have negative two by itself or to carry the past here carrying the past is better so that becomes one and our past becomes one here at five uh, we see that carrying the past is better so this becomes six and that's why we uh, the answer was this whole interval when we got to five now at three uh, same thing the past is now six so it's better to take uh, the past so that becomes nine and that's the actual answer so each time we keep updating our best I forgot to do that so our best so far is nine and now negative five it's better to carry the past but the value has become now four four two same thing here uh, the value becomes six and here it becomes eight but none of these values updates the max that's why the answer is nine so that's pretty much it let's see how that looks like in the code so we start by reading our length of the array we declare our vector of values and remember we are using long longs because we don't want any overflow issues so we scan our values then we declare these two variables that we talked about the best which we initialize with minus a billion and then the past which we set to zero to start with then for each element in our array we will check if carrying the past is better than just being by oneself so if that's the case we keep the past and we add the actual value to it otherwise we just set the past equal to the present we forgot about any past and then at each step we have to we have to update our best so far and to end it we just paint the past that's it let's submit so that worked thank you for watching see you in the next video bye bye